Good evening, everybody. Quick announcements. Uh, Senator Ann Gobi's representative will hold office hours from 1 to 2 p.m. tomorrow, April 20th, uh, in the banquet room in the town hall. Uh, do you mind if we um, pass over the reports on the warrant sign? That's fine. Okay, great. Thank you. No um, uh, could I get a motion to take um, certain items out of order? Sure. Okay, tell me. Uh, just, just, we'll just do a okay. general vote. I'd like to make a motion to take certain items out of order. All right, I'll second that. All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. All right, so we're, uh, we have to wait until 6.30 for the poll hearing, so let's start with general discussion. Keep land for possible senior center. Um, Brenda, did you have information that you wanted to, to talk to that item? What's that? I'm sorry. Okay, come on up to the, if you would, Kermit, and introduce yourself, even though we all know you. Would you have a seat? Okay. Yeah, please. Thank you. Please and thank you, sir. And this is you know. <laughs> That's what is <laughs> Mr. Did he say something? He Sorry. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I expect that. Uh, I guess a couple people have asked me to talk about the possibility of a lot uh, between Lawrence Extension and Hayden possibly going up. It's Lincoln for, Street Extension. Lincoln, said, Lincoln Street. Yeah, you said Lawrence. <laughs> and Lawrence. Thank you, Linda. Uh, and uh, possibly going up to auction. Uh, and uh, they thought that that might be a possible site for a senior center. Uh, first, let me step back. Uh, you know, this property going up for auction. <clears throat> I, I think I'd like to commend the select board, the town administrator, the assessors, the tax collector, who are doing a pretty good job of uh, processing some of the delinquent properties we have and uh, foreclosed properties we have. And uh, that's been a long time coming, and they've been doing a good job doing that. Uh, I would recommend that they not put that on auction at this point uh, because I'm not sure that's the best site for a select a, a senior center. But there really needs to be a group of people to sit down and talk about the wants and needs of the seniors and the community. Uh, is that the right site? Are there alternative sites that might work if they decide that there's a need for a senior center? Uh, could you use that site for not only a senior center, but multi-use facility, perhaps, a community center? Um, so I think you need to take an inventory of the properties that might be available for that. There's also, you, you ought to think, consider a possibility of, of that site being used for something more beneficial to the town than a senior center. And I don't know if that's feasible or not, but I think it worthy of study. Uh, I look back at the police station and uh, there was a lot of pre-investigation, going to visit sites, going to talk to other communities, and talking about cost and options and so forth. And that added value and we, able, we were able to come up after many, many years of building a police station at a very reasonable price. And so I think that it behooves the town to take into consideration and, uh, and, and to take a look at those options. And you can't do it between now and I think the auction is in August. Yeah, so I, I don't think it would harm the town if you could delay that 
for another year or something to look at the options for that property. I mean, I ha I'd hate to sell it to a uh, low bidder who decides to build some sort of uh, inappropriate piece of property. There. So, that's, uh, so I'm here to say, to just tonight, just to say, could you please consider holding off the auction and put together a group of people, could be appointed, could be just a group of people, to evaluate the options for that site. Any questions? Okay, thank you for your time. Yeah. You're welcome, thank you. Thanks for bringing it forward. I'm trying to thank you for sending the email to, to talk about it. I know we mentioned it in passing, I think, last meeting. Kelly, do, do you have handy or could could you have Amy put together a package on, on what the current um, tax delinquency, like what's what's the debit on the books right now for that property and, and do we have something from Al about what the actual property value is and, um, you know, just to, to understand what we're looking at and to be able to, to take that as part of the consideration. Do, do you know when we... Okay. Um, when, when's our deadline for deciding what goes into the auction and what doesn't? When you post the auction. Okay. Do you so know... When, when, we, when we're prepping for the auction, we need to know ahead of time what we're going to be offering, and then it would be part of the notification that goes out. Okay. And do you know what kind of timeline that Amy is going to need in order to do that notification? So what we've done in the past is we've hired an auctioneer that covers all of that. They take care of all of the postings and we give them a list. So prior to hiring them, we just need to know. Okay. Um, they, it's, it's not a hard and fast rule and they'll need to do some prep work. Um, it's, it's a great system. It's a self uh, self-funding self-funding is a self-funding yeah. auction um, because the fees for the auction are come out of the auction itself okay so it, it's not like I said it's not hard to fast we can, we can get the information and then you can have pretty much right up until the posting to decide okay um, Linda, what so are I would say you've got at least two or three months because we were talking about early summer late spring Okay. okay. Yeah. If, yeah. We're, if we're talking about a, if we're talking, well, did you say August was when we were targeting the auction? No, yeah, she's. I was, I was hoping uh, closer to June. Closer to June. That being said, there's no harm in holding those pieces out because there will be another auction. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of where I'm sitting right yeah. now. Is is uh, and go ahead. No, I feel the same way. Holding those pieces out. Yeah, I mean, it's especially not, we, where we've got this process going, yeah. I'm presuming yeah. it's going to be ongoing now and that it, we've it, got it going. And it's yes. no, I don't think it's really any big rush, you know, and, you know, to hold off on those properties, you know, because like we've got to, you know, do some uh, discussing, like Kermit had mentioned, to get some people together and figure out, you know, really if that would be a good place to put the uh, a property, you know, put a senior center or whatever, whatever else we would be putting over there. Yeah, I, I agree completely. There's absolutely no reason yeah, to put no those reason, no on the um, current upcoming yeah. auction. There are plenty of properties that are going up for sale. There are a lot more that will be coming out of right. um, the process yeah. of mm -hmm. Lake Court with a clean yeah. bill of health that we'll be doing again. So I'm hoping to make this an annual event until people can pay their taxes. <laughs> we don't need to. <laughs> We, we haven't had an auction since back in the 80s when we sold a crop property out on 148. So that was the last time we had an auction on the prop, on properties. Okay, so do you, you want to make a motion to hold these out? For, no. Okay. Would, okay. I would like to make a motion to hold out uh, certain properties like Lincoln Street Extension properties until uh, we have another auction here in the community. Okay, so, so let me just... Let me just restate it. So, so oh, you your your motion is that we should withhold the parcels yes. that are five Lincoln Street Extension, yeah. eight Hayden Ave. Yeah, five extension. Okay. And what what Hayden Ave? It was eight Hayden Ave. Eight Hayden. Okay. 
I would like to make a motion to hold out of, uh, from auction uh, would be 5 Lincoln Street Extension and 8 Hay Hayden Avenue. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're going to hold those for now until we figure it out. Um, so as part of that discussion, um, do we have five people that would be willing to serve as the committee to review that site for um, because five seems to be kind of like the ideal level of being yeah. able to get a quorum together, but also be able to get two people in a room talking to one another without having a quorum. So do we actually have five people in the room that want to want to be part of that decision process? Absolutely. As Kermit made the telephone call to, to talk about the, the topic. Uh -huh. uh, I, it just refreshed my memory with respect to open space and master plan. Okay. And so I'm almost thinking that if you're going to, if there, sure. if there are five people that would do this on a short-term basis, to kind of provide some guidance mm -hmm. that we look to the uh, the master plan commit to see if those people would would actually volunteer for the for the larger master plan activity so that we could get that going so that we could have a, a more comprehensive view of the different properties and the different opportunities that we have who was who was standing on that committee last year i don't think it, it, it hasn't it, met it, my, my departure it, it kind of just told us so I, i'm just thinking that And then when we're done on this topic, yep. ask those same people to continue the work against the map to the next that makes sense. You know, um, because I think it's I think I think it's a good point that we should be looking at, at this in terms of the old master plan. We need to do a refresh. Kelly, we had the discussion last meeting. We need to do a refresh on the master plan in order to be eligible for certain um, grant applications, correct? Right? That was the discussion we asked. Yeah. Yes. So it so, fits with that. So it would fit with that even if we were only doing it a piece at a time, kind of like a 10% yep. instead of 100% inventory, if we do a sample in 20 months. So, yes, sir. Well, there are you can yell at this point. So I, 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 I said what I said facetiously because this is more bodies than we've seen in this room in a long time. So please, please, you know, I, I was saying it a little bit facetiously, but if, if we could get three out of the five out of this room, it would yeah. be an exciting thing, yeah. frankly. Because I saw some hands. That said <laughs> yeah, and I saw some hands. So. I, I don't know who's sitting behind me. <laughs> 
<laughs> so. So. Um, I, and then I back. Would suggest that the people that are on that committee may at least review the old master plan, even though it's not valid at this time. Correct. Just to get a scope of. of Uh, and, uh, the, the, okay, so the last two people speaking were Kermit Eaton and uh, Don Taft. Okay, Ken, you don't have to turn the computer, just tell me what they are. Maybe they can identify themselves. Right. Yes. So, and just with respect to the master plan, there was an inventory of the master plan. Today that's interested in serving, we'll do the appointment. And, and if, if, if you guys can find if you'd like to find a, the mix that you're describing, in, in, including one naysayer, I think that would be a really good idea. View is on it. Well, no, that's what I said. I said, let, let, if you want to bring, if you want to bring a list of names to the next meeting, I think we're actually meeting next week. Is that, is that too short a period of time, or is a week? I think what what I what I'd like to see for this in in, in a perfect world. We get names together for next week. I think we give the committee eight weeks, eight weeks, two months, to review the property and give a recommendation about whether it's an appropriate property or not. Sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that's absolutely fair. Either next meeting or, or what what's our next we're gonna we're gonna decide tonight to I guess. Well, however much you get done, whether you want to hold the meeting next, next week or, or not, not there's one or a five to three. Make sure it's next let's, time. let's plan for the five three meeting. Give you a couple of weeks to get the right people together or what you do. Okay. Six thirty. It is six thirty. So yep, that's okay. So you guys can bring forward a, a, a slate, let's call it that. Um, I think since we're talking about annual auctions, technically we would have a year to get the study done. a year from today to get the study done, and then the property could go on the next auction, and we're going to do that. So, uh, but to be honest, I think in, in, in that perfect world, we know by like February,
to take we voted to keep we voted to keep the property off. We don't have we don't have to really vote on the committee because we're not appointing people tonight. And I think we have discussion. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. All right. Please give your name and what you're here for. All right. Um, my name is Rebecca Marks. I'm here for National Grid. Proper guidance and uh, the pole actually down the road that we're moving six feet. We don't need to in, uh, it's within the three feet. So, at the right today, we're just petitioning to put the stub pole across um, from pole two. And Kelly, is there anything specific we have to read in order to open the poll hearing? Just, she's muted. Okay. So do we have any abutters present besides myself? Okay. Are you representing the churches and abutters? Okay. Yeah, I was actually glad to see you here for this. So um, at this time, do we... Go ahead. Okay. Um, so just to describe it, let's see here. Um, one of them has to be moved three feet. Correct. And yep. then the other is four feet. And both of those, for a period of time, are going to be basically in the parking spaces along that side of the road. Correct. Correct. Um, do you have any any objection or concern that you want to express? Grid, it wouldn't be too much of uh, the man. I believe the name is Keith. He's from the town. Um, he actually is going to put a uh, hurricane barrier around the, the pole because that was another thing that we kind of wanted to bring up tonight. Because technically, National Grid doesn't want to be responsible for the pole in the middle of the road. If it gets hit, then obviously we replace it. Um, but we need to protect that pole. No, it's it's uh it's usually six to seven weeks after we we'll do the petition, um, then it goes to uh, scheduling, but then usually within six to seven weeks they'll move the poll. So like July maybe. Yeah. Say they'd be so, yeah. Okay. So the project's going to start in July. Yeah. So by the time the poll gets moved, we might not even have an issue. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, that's the thing. We don't really know the. I mean, sometimes with storms and everything, we don't. I've seen polls in two weeks, but I've seen polls in six months. So it's kind of, they say six to seven weeks, so that's the timeline. You have to say when Okay. All right, so are there any other abutters with questions regarding this action? Okay. So it sounds like in a perfect world, if we hit the six to seven week mark, 
So please, if you can at least communicate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can definitely put a date in there. Uh, yeah. The is that is that we really need it to start, and we need it to be completed within six to seven weeks because we really need that work done in order for the rest of our road project to commence appropriately yep. and not have it turn into um, a domino effect getting in the way of the project. So um, anyone else have comments or concerns or questions regarding it? So the water department is starting a project for the water main. Correct. Um, they will be mobilizing next week. Construction will start. Um, it may be on site next week uh, to be done in July. So just want to be sure that that doesn't impact the water department work. Do you know if the any of the water main work is running that same side of the road as where the pole is at? It's basically down the middle of the road, but they will also be doing laterals. I mean, I don't know where the water goes in. Huh. It's up. Huh? We've got church on Sunday, every Sunday. And, <laughs> and so if, if we're going to be down, down the middle of the road, I mean, people have to realize that as we progress with this, that we've got to bunch of interests that are important and, and having access to the church is important. So right. I, I, again, I think between water and highway, we've got to make sure that the Central Street, at least at, that end of the, at the end of the Central Street, needs to be accessible for folks to get in. I mean, I could get AA on Wednesday nights, and again, trying to get to the back of the church. So we need to make sure that we're not encumbering that, that capability. I wasn't going to talk about the project during the pool hearing. So highway started, but I wanted to be sure that um, you know National Trip knew about the water project. We'll talk about the water project when Ryan gets up. Okay. Okay. Great. So um, are we free to? So we have no one that objects. So um, I think all we need to do is close the, the poll hearing at this point. Um, so we're going to close the poll hearing as of uh, 643. And uh, let's see here. Okay. Next thing on the agenda is the thank highway you. discussion. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Okay. Now, actually, we don't have the we don't have most of the um, we don't have at least one of the parties for some of the highway discussion. Yep. So why don't we go over what you want to discuss yep. and then. Um, I'm over the part that I want to discuss. Does, does he want to touch on the, the project first? Or? Yeah, that's not okay. on the agenda. Never mind. So. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs>
I think this is a good start towards what we were asking for. Okay. Good. I think I think it's a good way too. Okay. One of the things I I would like us to do though is to um, identify so because we do do a lot. I agree that there's probably in saving. If we can start collecting kind of that information that people, that way people, we've got a certain level of transparency of, hey, yes, we're, we do do a lot of maintenance, and, and I think there may be a little bit of lack of understanding of when you've got all the hydraulics and all the things that go into this equipment, and a lot of it's got like recycled equipment on top of new frames and yeah, we got, the, yeah. the stuff that goes into that. I, I think that there's a... Uh, um, it wouldn't hurt to, to do some education, but this is the this is the type of, yeah. of like level of detail that I was looking for okay. pretty much. Good, so, good. Um, and uh, now the other half of it though, because I sent you two things. I yep. sent you this, yep. and then I sent you kind of the, like, and, and I, had to, I had to file the serial numbers off of it because it's from one of my own project plans at work. That, that's, there's the real project plan that actually gets stuff done, and there's the one I give to my executive team that, that keeps it simple enough that they kind of know what's going on without necessarily needing to look at it. Um, and uh, I think we really need something kind of visual like that that says, hey, here's the calendar. Hey, we're doing tree work and, and road maintenance until April. We've got the big project starting for water in April. We've got the rest of Central Street happening roughly in here. You know, yeah. I, I think we really do need like a calendar like that to, to bring it home for people about what goes on when and, and what to expect going on around town. The, the big things that we do every year, are that's, that's easy because each, each season changes. I can tell you what we're going to be doing next October. Yep. I already know. Yep. But um, there is some things that are variable in there, and th those are going to be the hard ones to predict. But I you can... know, but the expectation is that every plan – once it hits contact with the enemy, changes, uh, right? Yeah. The enemy is the unknown, but we still have the plan to start out with. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. this is a this is a good start. Thank you for this. Okay. So, um, right. and then the one other thing that we talked about is we are going to target mm -hmm. trying to, to paint my favorite crosswalk. We're going to paint the crosswalk. Yep. Down at White's Landing sometime yep. between now and the end of June. This year's this year's money. No problem. Awesome. Yep. Anything else that we needed to talk about? Uh, I can give you a quick little update on Central Street if you want. That'd be awesome. Okay, so we have a f we have a like a ninety five percent final plan right now in hand. Um, we had a meeting today. There's going to be a few little modifications and figure a few things out. But we're we're probably like four to five weeks from going out to bid. Okay, so four to five weeks from going out to bid could be. A while before they start work. We're aiming for a July 1st start of construction okay. for the highway portion. Okay. Hopefully. Right, because they got to get through the water portion. Do do we know approximately when we're expecting the water portion to end? Yes. So the the start date is uh, April 29th. The completion date is uh, June 24th. Okay, and you're targeting a July start so right like as after. soon as soon right as you can should, after that. They should flow one right into the other, hopefully. Okay. Um, we're waiting for the Mass DOT Highway Access Permit right now. That that's going to take another thirty days potentially. So that's what's holding us up right now, pretty much. Um, Is there any any cubicle wall we need to knock on in order to try to move that along? No. Or? Well. We're so close, it's not even funny. Literally, one one thing, and they're going back to them today. The engineer is going back to Mass DOT today, so the new clock of 30 days starts 
literally today. Okay. Hopefully, they did the last one in 18 days, so hopefully this one goes quicker too. Okay. Um, but I am putting a November 1st deadline on the project so that I have time to do the paving before the winter. Okay. That That's, seems to be even cutting it close, but. It's cutting it close. But if I have a, if our contract says November 1st is the, the deadline for the contractor, that means I can have paving scheduled for the second week of November. Okay. And like in the paving world, Thanksgiving is the real deadline. Okay. So I'm right in between there. Hopefully it's cutting it close, no getting around it. But they were has the engineer was hesitant to even put a, a deadline on November 1st because of the supply shortages and stuff's hard to get and whatever, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I know I've seen other projects do it, but if we can have some sensitivity about maintaining access to the rear oh, yeah. of, the, no, of the church, that'll be good. Yeah, we're gonna, you know, the working hours will be during the day, no weekends that I know of. It, it all depends how the project proceeds. If, if they get behind, then maybe there would be a Saturday or two, but. We don't have a contractor yet, so I can't even say for sure. Understood. Okay. But, um, while Clarence is here, the, the, the bushes by the church, those are actually going to end up having to be removed. I noticed that on the plans. Is, is there going to be a, is that an issue? Well, they have to be, they have to be, we'll have to do something to remediate. But, I mean, that's, that's fine. We can do yeah. something. So just go down the hill a little bit further. Okay. I forget to tell you that part until I... So as long as that's in your budget, I really appreciate it. Yep. <laughs> we'll figure out a way. Yep. So the... Everybody's uh, a comedian. So... The fire department parking lot and all the way up to the steps of the town hall are now included in the project for paving also. Okay. So we're not going to put new asphalt against old asphalt. You know, it's all it's not in good shape, so... That's a, that's a good plan. Yep. So, yes. Under the highway discussion, would you like a briefing on, on the water project? Yeah, I'd like I'd like to understand what's going to go on and Should what our risk would be on if on that on Should that I July one date asking. based on what your project plan is. She can hear. She's back. If that's not on the agenda, should we bring in? Well, I'm, I'm asking in the context of the Central Street being yep. part of the larger. I, I had asked Ryan for an overall project plan for the town for all of the stuff that he has going on for the next year. Yeah. He just gave us a verbal update on the calendar yeah, for know, know the road. Did. I think we're okay talking about the potential for there's a dependency between the water project and the highway project. Big time. So I'd like to understand the water project okay. So we're dependency. talking with Ryan on his schedule and coordinating the two. Right. Uh, we had a pre-construction meeting today. Uh, the contract is signed. The starting date is the 29th. We're going to start on, on the Common Street end. Okay. Um, it, will, it will move along quite well. We're going to... Um, Complete work every every night is going to there will be no open trenches. Uh, we will not pave until the end of of the of the uh, excavation work. Uh, so we will not leave any any trenches open at night. Um, it it's going to move along very quickly, but I will talk with you a little bit. Um, so um, we, looks like we're we're really got a fast track project okay great so, and and we should be done so that uh, the uh, highway work can continue as soon as we're done or yeah, make, shortly make it almost like one contiguous project okay yeah, it, if everything goes right yeah yep yeah uh, or... got it okay that's okay. it got it next so um, then we still have to talk, Ryan, before you can, on Mr. Hayes. Um, well, he's not. Oh, Mr. Hayes isn't here. I, I spoke with him earlier. Um, and uh, so he just, he's adamant that he would prefer not to see that type of damage in the future. Request. Um, and, uh, you know, I, like I, I like I, I think you and I had a discussion earlier. I get how physics work on a curve, but if we can not cut that curve quite so tight and yeah. make sure we 
plow all the way on the other on the outside of the curve, I think uh, it would go a long way to, to people having confidence in the process. So, um, but uh, but yeah, we've we've got I think we've got that covered for now, um, yeah. and we'll just see what we can do going forward to do better. No, I, I was there last week with Mr. Hazel coming out. So. Yeah. So, but I, I spoke with him a bit today. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Um, Anything else? That's all I've got. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to skip over warrant and budget review for now. Uh, we've got the 522 um, election warrant for the town elections. So, Article 1 basically, it's the ballot for moderator, selectman, assessor. Elementary School Committee, Fantastic School Committee, um, Water Commissioner, Board of Health, Planning Board. Two for seats. both, there's two seats, one for five years and one for three years. Mm -hmm. uh, cemetery Commissioner for three years. Two trustees for the Merrick Public Library for, five, for three years. One town clerk for three years. Two constables for three years. One trustee for the Shade Tree Fund for three years. And, uh, and fundamentally, we need to post this. Yeah. Um, and the actual yeah. election is Monday, the 2nd of May. It has to be posted 10 days before. And it needs to be posted 10 days before, so. All right, so yeah, can I get a motion to, to um, uh, I'll make, sign I'll the make a election motion warrant? motion to sign the uh, May 2nd, 2022 election warrant. All right, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Where do you hold the election here? Uh, the town here. hall. Here, in the, the banquet, banquet hall. Go ahead and what other topics do we have? So let's skip over to a cable update and get that done. Did we also have something regarding the uh, access to? Uh, I thought we were going to have somebody on the agenda for access to the to the boat launch. Did that not make the agenda? Uh, we decided to put it on five. Three member. I spoke to you about that. It was a pre oh, that's agenda. Right. And he yep. agreed to wait till then. Okay, yeah. great. No, I didn't remember. Else, I wouldn't ask the question. Yeah, <laughs> well, you Thanks. said okay. All right. <laughs> it's in an email. <laughs> I'm sure. So. so. All right. So we're going to go ahead and skip to uh, cable update. So we've got. Um, an update from the uh, Public Access and Communications Committee. So uh, appropriate salary funding for the position is, is being submitted for the 2022 annual town meeting as part of the cable access budget. Um, the position also has to be added to the warrant um, for the town meeting to ensure that we're legal in hiring somebody. Uh, and then the job description and pay scale is still in work, uh, and the uh, committee chair and uh, our town administrator are working on the task so that um, that uh, once the annual town meeting is out of the way, we'll be able to get that finalized um, and approved by the personnel committee. Um, they're exploring the option of hiring an outside firm specializing in video production. Um, and there's been a number of studio upgrades executed. Uh, the new computer equipment is installed and operational. There's new Wi-Fi and email accounts activated with Microsoft Office installed. The station's editing software has been activated. Um, and it's installed both on the new editing computer and the old EDIS computer. Um, oh, at some time over the last two weeks, the studio suffered a power outage. The APS currently installed as a backup and search protector only lasts 15 minutes. Uh, 
by the time the school notified uh, the, the committee, the APS alarm was going off. Um, the backup battery had drained, the internet and Wi-Fi had been kicked offline. Without the internet, we can't access the Adobe Premium Pro software to work on the backlog of videos. So Jacob is going to be at the studio, um, it looks like it was supposed to be this tomorrow afternoon, um, to restore the internet feed um, and to instruct uh, folks on how to reboot the system in the event this happens again with the APS. Um, after that, Teleview needs to upgrade our firmware and software. Um, they have contacted the person at Spectrum that needs to actually get the IP address uh, and internet connection information so that Teleview can remote in and do what the work they need to do in order to get Teleview um, to do their work. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, So apparently Charter refused to give the IP information needed because um, the individual calling wasn't the authorized person, but then they wouldn't say who the authorized person is to do the work. Kelly, what do we need to do in order to clear that up with Charter as to who the authorized person is to get the IP information? Or do you think Jacob can just get, get a ping response that'll identify we what that IP is. We should actually be able to get online and just get the address. I mean, I've yeah. seen that happen um, I don't know why the IP address is a secret. Yeah, that's I've very never heard of that before. That's very bizarre actually. Um, So there's a ticket in with Teleview to see if they can access the router using the IP address that they had historically. Um, I, I think Jacob actually probably can figure out a way to just to ping that hardware and find out what the IP address is. A um, bunch of old studio equipment and furniture has come out of the space. Um, Kelly, if and Ryan, you, would you mind getting approached about helping to move some of the heavier stuff out of the studio that needs to go? I know that we use you guys as a moving company for the town, but are, are you okay with helping with some of that stuff? Okay. Um, um, there's a couple of heavy, like, old desks and some, some large CRT monitors, old TV that need to get moved out of there. The kind that they're two-man lift just because they're... So it, it, Sharon, if you could reach out and just on that, that would be great. Um, let's see here. The near-term focus is going to be getting the information up on YouTube because we do have, what, like a, about a four or five month backlog right now. And then... Um, And then there is, there is going to be some investment in new camera and mic system that's compatible with um, doing live stream uh, based off of the rest of this year's funds. Um, let's see here. And then there's a, a, a timeline and summary of the information here as of the 18th uh, that I'm not going to go into detail. <laughs> Would you like a copy of this? Do you have a Um, sure. So, I was up here three months ago, four months ago, mm -hmm. or back last fall, I don't know what the date was. You told me you were going to have this thing up and running. Yep. February, what happened? 
Everything just took longer than what we expected. It's been four years since this thing's been off. Everything took longer than what we expected. Four years? Yep. If your car broke down, is it going to take four years to fix your car? No. I bought your lawnmower to cut your lawn. You're going to get your lawn cut. You're going to get your lawnmower fixed. We got all this equipment. It was brand new four years ago, four or five years ago. Now we're talking about all new equipment again. So I guess my main question is, when are we going to have cable access back on TV? <clears throat> I'm not going to give you a date. Well, now you're talking about hiring somebody. We allocated money for this position, I think, two years ago, I believe, at the town meeting. So, unfortunately, at the time that we allocated the money, right? one, we allocated, I think, something like $9,000, which was not adequate to hire somebody for the work that we're described. And unfortunately, because mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be frank with you, a couple of meetings ago, I'm like, why haven't we started this process yet? And fundamentally, what it came down to is when we voted at town meeting, we did one of the three steps we needed in order to actually establish the position in the town. Okay. One of the reasons why we've now brought in a town administrator is because when you have amateurs running stuff, you make mistakes. And, and I'll do respect, you know, every single one of us, you know, people on the personnel board that try to do a good job. Select men in the personnel board that didn't have the best communication in terms of what the requirements were to have a position existing in the bylaw for us to be mm -hmm. able to hire. Okay. So we voted yes at the town meeting, hey we're gonna have this position. We didn't set a grade, we didn't set a step, we didn't set any of the requirements and we didn't actually change the personnel bylaw to create the position. So at this point, we're going back and having to redo the work associated with that because when we did it the first time, we didn't basically cross every T and dot every I to, to do what we needed to do in order to have that position be fully legal and vetted in it. Yeah, that's all good and Danny, but we've been running this TV station with amateurs. I ran it, I was on that committee for seven yep. years. And when it went down, we had it up and running within two days. And if we couldn't figure it out, we called Charterman. And they came in and helped pick up the members, and we got it back up and running. Okay. So back to my same question, four years. It's unacceptable. That's not a question. And we have a, we a, have a com so Do we have a committee? Do you have a, what's that? Do we have a committee? Cable access committee? Currently, Curre we have one. Currently, we have one person. And who's that? It's Sharon Mahoney. Okay, and, and we have no one else but her? Currently, no. Okay, so it's been four years, and I just, I, I, I mean, you know, this just keeps going on and on. Now you're talking about hiring someone, maybe we'll get somebody before it was broken equipment. When, when you know, we gotta come to a head here and get, get, get it back on again for the people. And it just seems like we're just stumbling down the road, stumbling down the road, and nothing's getting done again. So you have some kind of so a projection. Your opinion. I, it's I not agree. my opinion, it's fact that things have been off for four years. That's well, unacceptable. For, well, for two years. Chad has been giving us so, money. Every year we're supposed to be so using this for money. The last, fundamentally, for two years of that, we weren't videotaping because we were in a, a remote environment and those meetings were getting recorded via Zoom. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'll be very frank with you. During a period of time when we were doing 100% remote meetings, it was not a priority to go after putting stuff back on the charter because it was getting recorded and made available to you. So, so just mm -hmm. that, that block of time was like lost time. Okay. Right, but things, still, are, things are a little bit different in trying to get some of these people on site during this period of time. I got your feedback. Okay. I agree it's been too long. Okay. We've taken a lot of the steps. If you go and compare that, to the piece of paper I handed to them last time. A lot of the activities that were cited in there that were prerequisites to getting back online have happened. There's been progress. So I hear what you're saying. On a certain level, I agree with you. The flip side of it is we've made some progress. Okay. We're taking the three steps required to get the stuff back online. We're engaging some of the professionals in order to, to get the IT stuff figured out. Okay. Um, come back. Come back in two weeks, and we'll see where we're at. Okay. A lot of the activity related to getting the stuff back online is planned in the near term. 
Okay, so you get all the equipment up, then what's going to happen? If all the equipment is, is good again, then what are we going to do? Now, some of the operators? Who's going to do that? We're going to have to get somebody here to do it? Get somebody here to do it. Okay. We're getting money from China, I think. That money's supposed to be allocated to keep this station up and running. Agreed, but at least, so the money is still there, and we, we will have it to spend to get this stuff up. Okay, I'm going to stay on. I'll be here, put me down. I'll be here, put me on the agenda. Go ahead and put him on the main agenda. Uh, another thing, that's off, off subject, but... Uh, uh, if it's not on the agenda right I'm now... I'm talking... Why that boat ramp is going to block it. That's going to actually be on the side of the end. Right. Um, so I do want to acknowledge the fact we have two members of the advisory committee in here, and I'm assuming that you came in because of the budget and the warrant being on the agenda. Um, but we are missing one of the board of selectmen. Um, are there are there specific aspects of the budget that you had wanted to discuss tonight? Okay. Um, I don't want to disrespect your time since you showed up, though. So, um, yeah, if I may, yep. um, I think one of, one of the toughest for discussion, and I believe I saw Mike signing in as well as the um, possible new clerk for the boys and families for 18 minutes. Okay. Uh, I have spoken to Mike earlier. I do want to go through the board, but this is just one item part of the board. I mean, if, if they're going to do if they're going to do meetings, it probably couldn't be two eight-hour days. It would probably have to. Ah. Oh, that makes sense. 
Okay, and that makes sense. And then it also makes them available, say, if there's like, and, and I don't know, you know, say there's something that, that for conservation, con conservation where they have to reach out to the state or what have you, they can do it during mm -hmm. business hours, that sort of thing. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. They, can, they can work with the EP on NOIs, they can um, assist planning and you know, defining the butters and getting a butters list and, and um, doing the mailings. So there are a lot of reasons that Brookfield actually needs this position. It allows for better services to the residents and more efficiency for our overworked boards who don't really have time because they want yeah. jobs. And, Right. I, basically yeah, I just um, I just had a contact from the conservation committee um, asking them, I think about this sort of thing about what kind of clerical support we could offer them. Mm -hmm. So. So everybody who's on board, like I said, but like board of health is is very much wants to keep their current clerk. She has a great relationship with um, the other people that they work with. Mike can speak to that. She's extremely knowledgeable. This is her field of expertise. She's full time doing this in another test, so she's well worth keeping. However, we're going from adding an additional two thousand dollars into the budget to adding an additional eight thousand dollars into the budget to cre create the position without the, the um, board of house clerk's salary being pulled in. I don't mm. know if that'll make a difference at town meeting, but Mike, did you want to speak to that? Um. Yeah, just to reiterate what uh, Kelly said is um, we did discuss it at a meeting and we do we'd like to retain our clerk. She enjoys working with us. We did establish a good relationship with our engineer and our board um, of health agent. And so that's it really works out well. But Kelly's right, you know, I've been the guy that's been going back and forth for records requests up there. So if, if we could get somebody that could be here during the day to do that, that would be helpful. Yeah. You know, um, to the board health office or anywhere else. Is that is that what you're, you're looking for? Yeah, I'm just trying, I was just trying to understand. So, so, so Kelly, what you're saying is that there's what, currently $6,000 of that, of that $15,000 would have been coming from the board of health budget? Correct. It's a little over 14 and uh, a little over 6 would be coming from board health, so we need to, to put in the difference. Okay. Um, and advisory, do, had, had you all reviewed this, the uh, article for the yeah, consolidated? Article, I haven't shared the articles because I wanted you to review them first, but I did, they, they do see that in the, as a line item in the budget as a new line item. Okay, so that was in the budget as well as in the articles. Yes, and I wasn't sure how the town wanted to handle it, so it's in both places and will be pulled out as one depending on how the town typically votes this type of um, situation. Mm. Okay. So. I'm in full support of this. I think we need it. Yeah, I would agree. I, I yeah, think full support. I, I think uh, I think the biggest uh, I think the I, I think historically for something like this, that's kind of a structural change, even though typically it would be funded at the budget line. I think in order to have a dis the appropriate discussion on it, we probably want to keep it in the warrant. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. I mean, it's voting as, as a position right. um, in the warrant. And you always do the budget prior to the remainder of the warrant that's Article 2 on any warrant. So you don't want it double funded. And exactly. You know, you could you put a hold on it and then vote it in the article just so that people will see that it's in the budget. But it's probably cleaner if we just do it in one place. Yeah, I'd almost, what I'd almost rather do is, and this is a discussion that we could have, you know, is is that we do the budget do the budget sheet but then i think one thing we haven't historically provided to the townspeople is a sheet that says here's our articles here's a short title for that article here's what that article cost is so the actual bottom line like what it is if you vote everything in the article or in the warrant what it actually comes out to be so that you don't have eight you know that will be part of the budget presentation okay all right. Yeah, so we may just want copies of the presentation available for people at town meeting as well. You know, just a hard copy of whatever you're, you're going to be presenting. So. Okay. Now, when is that May 20th you're going to do that, Kelly? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Okay, so now do, is the budget, has the budget gone over to the advisory or no? I shared the link with the advisory committee okay. um, uh, and so that they could see what I was working with. Okay. I have no idea if they've had an opportunity to take a look at it or avail themselves to us. Have you all had a chance to review it? We have had a chance to review it. There are still some things that we are working through. Um, the the all boards clerk and uh, the technology line, uh, which involve rearranging budget items. It doesn't change the total budget, as I understand, but it's combining some budget lines. We're still wrapping our head around those. Um, so we, we have. I would say we have not finished our review of what Kelly shared with us. Um, almost two weeks ago when she visited with us. And Tom, you were looking for, um, via email, we've been discussing with Lori, trying to see what the town actually voted and what they spent. If you click on the second tab in that budget worksheet, you'll see the history and, of the town since 2018. Every single line item, every single article voted, the way it was voted at the meeting, and then what they actually spent at the end of the year. Okay. So it's already done. So all you have to do is go look at it. It may not be easy to read because it works with my head, not necessarily anybody else's. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm familiar with being in that situation. But, uh, okay, we will take a look at it. It's been mostly a, a bandwidth issue among our members. That never and happens. As far as the technology um, article goes, it's not an article, but the, the technology line is I've asked every single department what they need for their software. And what they have put aside for uh, technology repairs and whatnot, and combined it into a single technology expense, and pulled that amount out of each budget. And if you go on the actual spreadsheet, you'll see there's a tiny triangle in the upper right hand corner, and my notes are in there. It explains every single item, what line it came out of, and where, and how much it was. No, I know. Okay. No, I was just, I was I was I was doing the I forgot my reading glasses and this is printed up really tiny and just trying to look at what the bottom line looked like for the year. That's all. So I knew I wasn't looking for what you guys. Only the operating budget. The warrant items that have been flowing in from people, if they're not funded with free cash, will absolutely change the bottom line for the budget. Oh, understood, but... Not done with free cash or a transfer from pre-existing funds increases the budget. No, understood. That, okay. that goes without, that goes without it saying. It sounds like there was some confusion and some emails that were going across, so I just wanted to clarify that point. Yeah, and, and, and that's one of the things we have to be aware of. So, like, like for instance, and we didn't number the articles, but the article relative to the all boards clerk position um, like you said if we were gonna hire somebody for 15 hours a week right um, and if we're not going to include the Board of Health budget in that then it's gonna have an impact on the raise and appropriate um, versus if if it included the Board of Health work then it would um, it would be a, a net neutral fundamentally it be a total net neutral so that I could get the full 15 hours. Okay. So there would be a $2,000 increase to the bottom line. Okay. Uh, but that's why the difference would be $8,000 mm. and not just the six from the Board of Health. Got it. And these are, this is money the town has been voting for a few years now in most instances. It's, it's been turned back, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I see the, the cable coordinator position in there. Um, we've got some general budgeting for them as well. Um, I'm presuming the library repair and maintenance would be, um, we'd be going from free cash. That would make sense. It's a roof, it's a one time expense. Yeah. If yep. there are any normal maintenance expenses in there, 
line in that article, they should absolutely be able to put in the budget because you do not fund recurring expenses with the cash. Understood. Um. And as I was looking this over, Kelly, too, I, I had noticed like different reoccurring things. How you said that this should be in the budget, not be an article. Some of them, yes. Yeah. So, for instance, we do line painting every single yeah. year. Every single year. That's a recurring expense. Yeah. Now, I understand that it's in an article in case the line painting can't be done within the fiscal year. Correct. However, if it's contracted for, they can encumber the funds. And if it's not done during the fiscal year, they have the following years. Mm. Yeah, I think I think historically. There's no reason for that one to be an article unless there's some yeah. strange you know, it, it's, I uh, I I personally think that's a good idea to put that in the budget instead of putting these in articles. Like the same thing, like the um, protective clothing that the, that the uh, fire department puts in for every year. It should be in the budget, not as an article. I think these are all good ideas that you have things that we should have been doing. Yeah, you know, I, I understand I understand where you're coming from, but I think there's also there's also some value in um, that the article does give you some flexibility about whether a, an item goes to raise an appropriate versus um, uh, transfer a borrow, so. Well, that, that's true, um, and that's, that's perfectly acceptable if it's not a recurring expense. Right. If it's a recurring expense, it's the same expense every single year, just a different price, it belongs in a budget. If it's a one-time capital expenditure, that's what all the best practices, the DOR recommend that free cash only be spent on things of that nature. So the roof repair, the, the maintenance article for the library, perfect use of an article. Um, protective gear. No, because it's done every single year. It's something that we spend every single year. That is an absolute recurring cost. Now, if it allows you to not fund that particular issue, or, or, but why would you not fund protecting your fire people? I don't, can't see why you wouldn't do that. Right. Right. So, line painting? Yeah, maybe we can't afford line painting this year, so we don't do it. But, again, Yeah, I see where you're going with that. I can I can see that. It's entirely your call. It's entirely the town's call. It's just it's just a really dangerous way to fund uh, recurring expenses. Yeah. Yep. One concern. I, I understand Kelly's point, and I concur with the goal. My one concern is that we want to pay attention to the impact of this change to the tax levy. Right now, we have these expenses that we're funding through free cash. We'll use the fire protective gear as an example. We're funding it through, the levy is funding the operating budget. The free cash coming out of that operating budget then pays for the protective gear. If we change it so the protective gear is paid for out of the operating budget, and we just add that line item, that's going to increase the levy. And we're still going to generate the same amount of free cash without the use of it. And so therefore, well, I just think it's going to be So okay, I, would, I would like us, as part of this change, to look for ways to tighten the budget elsewhere so that we generate less free cash now that we don't need it. Well, and so, well I have a comment, too. Okay, so part of your free cash that's being generated is from a recurring expense. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have a who are going after tax title. That's part of your free cash. 
Yeah, and, and Kelly. Kel that's, that's just money you weren't anticipating. It came in during the fiscal year it wasn't um, anticipated. Hey, hey, Kelly, I also have another thing to propose. And and this is this is actually going to be funny if we wind up doing this because I, I, I think Mr. Cook will probably like either throw me a party or run me out of town. But we, historically speaking, there's been a lot of ac activism from the floor to do a uh, applying free cash to lower the tax rate. So I, I think a, a, a middle ground would be we move the items to the operational budget, but we consider at least a transitional period where at least a portion of it we vote to, to apply some of it to lower, uh, apply some of the free cash, a small amount. Covering What's a small amount. You apply a hundred thousand dollars of your free cash to lower the tax rate, it goes down thirty cents. Yeah. We've talked about now this you've before. got one third of your free cash bar. I'm sorry. You said how much? To go down? Uh, if you do a hundred thousand, all right, so that's not actually the like second quarter. No, yeah, I was gonna say that that's not even it's not even a quarter this year, I don't think. Um, we have over 400, but that's not, is that normal? I mean, you told me about so that, like, typically, that, uh, typically, we, has gone years with no free cash at all. Typically, if you average it over the years, we're, we run between two and three. Okay. Because, because, so because be in the. Reasonable amount to, to spend yep. during any meeting would be what you run typically. Yep. And then you ferret the rest away. Absolutely. Um, so, but but my but my thought it would be in in this instance as we're doing like a transitional period between putting this stuff on the warrant and funding it all through free cash, and putting well, it on raising appropriate. About big numbers and putting it on putting it in the in the budget. We're looking at how much for the line painting? Twelve hundred dollars. Seven five seven five seventy five hundred. Okay, and then you have how much for the um, another, say, just say another seven well, I, for, yeah. for the um, for the uh, equipment. equipment. Yeah. So it's about fifty. It, that's only about fifteen thousand. Part of it would depend on on if we fund road reconstruction or not. Do you have that money earmarked for anything? Well, road reconstruction. That one, I don't. I don't want to see the problem with that one staying because that gives you a lot of flexibility. I'm looking at these two little ones. Okay. Not the bigger ones where the road okay. uh, because you, you have road maintenance, I believe, in your budget. Yep. No. No. Is road maintenance is, is Ryan still there? Yeah, Ryan's still here. Everything comes out of road reconstruction. He doesn't have a road expense he has a general expense budget for the highway department, but he doesn't have like a road oh, okay. line all in right, his budget. It all, it all goes through that road reconstruction account. And we do tend to build it up and then do a big project and spend it down, build it up. And, and that makes sense to keep that as an article. Okay, um, I guess I, I, I guess I... I back and forth from the different parties on, on what should and shouldn't be an article. And, and I agree that we should keep the building one and the road reconstruction as an article. But the one okay. Being, I, I misunderstood because I... It should go into the budget and if they Use their, I mean, obviously, I have no doubt they're going to use their budget properly. Right. I, and, I, and I misunderstood because I thought you were saying that the, the building repair also should be a recurring. Well, I had asked initially, why are these here? Why are they not in the budget? I thought the building repair one, and I spoke with Brenda about this, was for general maintenance of the building. Oh, okay. Capital projects. Yeah, typically it's small capital projects, mm -hmm. to be honest. It's I'm things like. With the road reconstruction, that if that's the only money Because it rolls over. Okay. Tom, you okay with that? Yeah, I mean, if the if if, we're on, if the articles that we're looking at moving into the operating budget are not a big chunk of money, then there's less need to offset it. I'm sorry. Could you repeat what you said? It's muffled because of the Sorry. I I was agreeing with you that it's probably something we can live with. Yeah, for this. If you don't want to do it this year, that's fine. I'm just advising you that, that this is not a good plan to 
No, uh, understood. And we guys do whatever you little fuckers do. Thanks, Kelly. Well, and plus, like you said, we're not doing it on, on any big dollars. It's small dollars, so it might be a good it might be a good transition year. So, um, okay, um, excuse me. So, yeah. do we have any, any consensus on this um, municipal clerk? How the board is going to go? Are you going to be reviewing and making decisions tonight? No. On the board review. We're we're not gonna we're not gonna make decisions tonight. I wanted to get some discussion out of the way, but we're gonna need to revisit it at a future meeting because we're missing Adam, okay. and I'd like him to be part of the, the mm -hmm. full dialogue. So you're not gonna make any decisions on no. placing any arms no. on the board tonight. No. And plus, Kelly should be with us also. Okay, so do you anticipate doing that next week? We're targeting yeah, next week. Depends on whether or not that is available. Oh, that's true. Did we have confirmation from him yet whether he's available? He didn't say. Okay. He said he would update his calendar. I look at his calendar from here. I can't see. It all says pending. It doesn't say anything that, that's a, that tells me whether he's available or not. So. Okay. All right. So if we met, it would be on a Tuesday again, like a week from tonight. Yep. Um, I don't believe he's available. He said he was not available at the beginning of the week. Why don't, so, do we want? We do meet, it would be later in the week. Do we want to target a Thursday since that's when advisory is here, and we could uh, go through it all together? That works for me. It works for advisory and everyone else. You guys want to do a joint meeting Thursday of next week? Thursday of next week, the twenty-eighth. Sure. Yes. And I will. Um, I, I need to add the extra articles that came okay. uh, in the last couple of days. Okay. To the warrant, and then I will send uh, the updated warrant out to everybody uh, before Thursday. But I am in school, and I'm not sure when I'm going to have time, um, so it may not come to Wednesday. Understood. We're warned, at least. That's will, good. Will you be available to be with others here with us? Yes, I I today, and that's why I'm not there. Um, I, this evening as well, but, well, but I have to tell you, class will not go really late. Uh, you know, you the 28th is my anniversary, and mm -hmm. I have, we're going to a concert with my husband, so I won't be able to be here the 28th. Karen, Karen, will Karen be is here. not available at 28th. Um, okay. We, it's my anniversary. You're not available I either. Jeff isn't available. Okay. Are we going out? What about Wednesday? Is it is the building open on Wednesday or is there somebody got a meeting Wednesday? Because Wednesday's a heavy meeting night. Yeah, so I'll go check right now. Yeah, actually we don't have a bunch of big dollar warrant articles actually. We've got the we've got the old KP bill. That we have plenty of money because you've been saving us so much money this year on our legal fees. Really, it's it's not uh, really a lot on here for money. -wise. We've sure. got uh, the all clerk position. Yep. We've got cable coordinator, but that comes out of peg funds. We've got yep. the regular operating expenses, but yep. that comes out of peg funds. So then we've got the library, road reconstruction. Um, ambulance just because we have to vote it that way so the, really the big things will be like the council for the 350th anniversary yeah. um, the town yeah. hall phone system road yeah. yeah road reconstruction a town hall phone system and then allocating the money even though we're only going to spend it if we get the grant um, for Lewis Field yes Yep, I seventy-five for the school yeah. roof, and then fifty for OPEB to get started yes. on that. But the other there are two that are delayed, depending on how much is left out of the free cash. Yep. And how you want to allocate it. Okay. Yeah. Capital versus general. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that'll that'll put us in a good position, I think, from a standpoint of getting our our. Um, do you have what our 
stabilization fund overall fund levels are? No, not not at this time. No. Okay. Um, so the articles that were given to me. Um, hang on a second. Wait, no, computer. Okay. Council on Aging has a meeting at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, but I might be able to talk to them and ask them to change it. So that because I think they're pretty flexible. Uh, Council, Council on Aging, they have two meetings in a row, and but I might be able to, they might be able to change it because they're pretty flexible. They made it okay. right? That's yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they are, during the day, the day before. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. I have an article from the fire department for $10,000 for fire station improvement. Um, one to, for, the, for the police chief to get another vehicle. That makes sense. One for forty-two thousand dollars to replace the overhead doors at the fire station, and twenty-two thousand. I said forty-two thousand, right? You did. And twenty-two thousand for uh, semi-automatic external defibrillators. And another for 6200 um, for protective clothing and equipment. And that's what I was telling you that I, I, I have another number from him, but I could be misremembering it on that one. Okay. And then uh, the 25000 for Brenda and... Brenda Meadowville? Yeah, yes. no, for okay. the library. Yep. No, because we have two Brendas. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Right. That's okay. Um, and then we have requests from cable, but that's coming out of the cable. Right. Yeah. Um, funds. So that's. Okay. So we're going to punt to, we're going to reach out and see if Wednesday we can get the space. But you know, tomorrow. And then. Uh, um, now, are we going to discuss the budget also or just the ad? No. Um, what at the next meeting? Yeah, we'll do the that next at the next meeting. meeting. We're going to do this too. Yeah, right. I'll help get get it in a format where we can actually read it. Beth, this is next Wednesday, the twenty seventh. Yeah. All right. Let me check with the uh, my committee members and see if everyone's available. Yeah. If you if you could, I'll because I'll send a message out tonight and I'll board with care. Let me know in the morning and yeah. then I'll check with CLA and see if they can and, and it, they're available. Okay. And if not, we'll start to be getting danger close, but we could punt it out to the following Thursday. If, if Wednesday doesn't work for your committee, we could all, always push it to the 5th of May. Mm -hmm. Or we could uh, do a joint on, the May, on your May 3rd. May 3rd, yeah. So let's, let's get those options in front of people and let's, let's just plan it to be a powwow. Okay. So. Um, is there anything else that we need to cover tonight? So the rest is like minutes and uh, and reports. I think we could wait until next week to do that. Right. Were we going to set up meeting dates tonight? You said. No, the meeting dates are always the first and the third oh, Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to set them up. You said so. Well, we were going to decide if we needed another one next week, yeah. but we're going to yeah. decide that yeah. we don't. Yeah. We're going to decide that outside of here. Yeah. Fundamentally, we're going to mm -hmm. take okay. a look at people's availability and get get a meeting put on the calendar. So, all right. Um, in the absence of um, any other critical business, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Yeah, I will make a motion to adjourn at seven forty-five. All right. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.